to stand and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning and this opportunity to be together and fellowship and worship you and just please be with us as we look into your word today and just please help, Lord, that we would have open hearts and open minds to hear what your word has to say. Just please bless our time together today and please bless the main message afterwards. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to be reading in the book of James chapter 2. Starting in verse 14. I read this earlier in the week and I just kind of liked it and it stood out a little bit to me. James chapter 2, starting in verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? Even so, if it hath, if it hath not works, it is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me, my, show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought his works, wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was Rahab the harlot justified by works, when she had received the messengers, and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. I just really like how that, you know, kind of ties and talks about faith because obviously without works our faith is useless and without a little bit of faith our works would be dead. There would be no point in them. Um, there's, there's lots of, lots of uh, instances of that in the Bible um, here that talks about Abraham a little bit. But I actually, thinking about that, brought to my mind the story of Naaman um, in the Old Testament where he went... Um, that'll be in Second Kings chapter five, and we'll read that real quick too. Um, that just that story stood out to me thinking about that, where he went and washed. He was the leper there. That'd be in Second Kings chapter five. We'll read that real quick. Now Naaman of the host of the king of Syria was a great man, with his master and honorable, because of him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that this that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to and go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass, the king of Israel had read the letter, and he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Where, uh, wherefore, consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. And it was so, when Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, 
Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariots, and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth, and went away, and said, Behold, I thought, he will surely come out to me, and stand, and call on the name of the Lord his God, and strike his hand over the place, and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Pharaphir rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. And his servants came near and spake unto him, and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather then he said to thee, Wash and be clean. Then he went down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. That just, right there, just talking, seeing where, you know, he, he had to have had a little bit of faith, and I know as the king of Syria did, to have sent him to be healed. But until he actually done what he was commanded to and, and put in the work, he, he wasn't healed. He wouldn't have been healed by just walking by or going on. Sometimes, too, your work, like it talked back in verse 13 there, you know, where his servant, name and servant came, servant came back to him and told him, that if, you know, if they had told, told Naaman to do some great thing, he would have just done it, you know, without complaining or without ask, you know, questioning. You know, sometimes our, our work doesn't have to be something great or something just, you know, completely outstanding. Sometimes it can be something like just going and doing something simple, like here where Naaman saw, you know, he thought it was just some nasty river and he could do something cleaner and better and bigger when his work was just simply to do something that simple. Sometimes sometimes it's not something just great, but we have to have enough faith to be able to do our work when it's simple and also when it's great. But that's, that's about all I had there. So if anybody has anything to share or add to that, go ahead. I appreciate those scriptures. And uh, one little thought I had is... Um, while the king or Naaman were um, well, while the king was the king of Israel was all worried about what was going to happen um, uh, the prophet already knew what was going on as well even though he wasn't there or wasn't involved and he was the thought I have is that God is, was aware of the situation. It just wasn't happening without his knowing it. And he, he intervened and made a way for the king to escape um, getting in trouble. or it, I don't know what, <clears throat> why he did that, but he, um, the king was relieved to send him to Elijah, I'm almost sure. Another thought I had was um, how close Naaman did not get healed because of pride. And I, I wonder if that's a struggle for us often. Or I believe it is a struggle for us often that pride stands in our way of truth all too often. But anyways, Lord bless. I was visiting with some of the brothers this morning and something reminded me of a talk I had with a man um, probably a couple of years ago at a university. He looked like a very important man. He was carrying important looking books and I had a sign about riches and he asked about it. And the discussion, even though I don't remember it all, ended up uh, going towards... Um, uh, like saving uh, saving up for retirement and I think we talked about the 401k plan that a lot of people um, stow away when they're you know young and then they have it when they're old and stuff and 
um, I don't even remember what I said about it, but I, I, I think I like it discouraged him from doing it or something. And this man ended up laying out faith in such a clear way to me, even though he was sneering at it. Like he's, he was saying, like he, I could just go ahead and, and like chuck this stuff all out and give it to the poor, and I could just live day by day, and I could just this and that, and I don't remember what all he said, but, but at the end of it, he. He just had explained it so well, but he had thought of it as being wrong. Like this, this would be foolish to do this. Uh, I think he said something about he could become a gray old haired man, and and uh, his neighbor would have to take care of him, and um, just because he acted foolish when he was young. So that's the wisdom of this world. Just it just. It somehow it just through 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 their pride and through their concern for tomorrow and this and that they just miss this whole concept of of faith day by day faith and trusting in God and I know it's hard for myself too just to just to get it there but he explained it well but he thought of it as being wrong. Amen, brother Cody. I was thinking of uh, knowledge, that all the knowledge that we all get from studying the Bible and uh, over and over again when you said that uh, faith without works is dead uh, knowledge I guess you know we can I do it for myself I, I analyze, scrutinize, examine all the kings Northern Kingdom, Southern Kingdom, all the prophets, you know, new character analysis of all of them. And, but unless I'm applying that knowledge to my life, well, these are good traits to follow, and these are bad traits not to, to avoid. It, it's, it's useless. Faith without works is dead, and knowledge without putting it to work is dead. I think of uh, so many Bible characters like Enos, the prophetess, who night and day, she went to the temple and prayed, and it was faith, and she didn't, you know, faith, and um, it's, and, and, and Paul says the same, right? Uh, uh, don't go weary, don't grow weary of doing good, we'll, we'll reap in due time, whenever that is, but it's, it's uh, faith is, uh, it's an essential. The Lord be magnified.